Hey, good afternoon, everybody. We're the two old farts. I'm Chuck. Yeah, I'm Liz. I'm better looking at the two old farts. Here we go again. Every time. Every time. Every time. Guess who's winning? Me. I asked half a dozen people this weekend. Who? Do, friends. They don't count. Yes, they do. No, they don't. They're my friends. They count. If they're not my friends. Six. No. He's lying, everybody. <laughs> and what were you saying before you forget? I don't know. I forgot already. <laughs> you said about Aunt, you said about Aunt Carolyn. She wants you to send her a text message how to log on. She said if you want somebody from Georgia, you got to send her how to do it or the, or the uh, how to venue. So how does she watch the podcast? I have no idea. But it's she's Facebook. So it's not on Facebook. I have no idea. I don't know either. So anyway, send her the links. Okay, because this is what it's like dealing with old people. <laughs> so, um, we haven't had a lot of uh, downloads, mostly probably because we haven't done one of these in a couple of months. <laughs> We've tried to do it remotely, and the last time I was here, we got about five minutes in, and the dang thing crashed. It just quit. It just yeah. quit. So Just like me. It's getting old, too. I know. But you, you know what? It's, it's, it's very frustrating. But I also was thinking... I wonder if our for not so much our format, but you know the two old farts out and about because we don't go out and about that much. That maybe we should try to focus our podcast more on the father son aspect of things. Could be on on life, and we can throw in if we've gone somewhere and done and yeah. done some things because the the last concert you and I went to see. Tracy Lawrence it was Tracy Lawrence, and yeah. that was last Friday. Yeah, and then I had one this past Friday. It was, and your mom had a good time. She was there. Huh? She was there. Yeah, at Tracy Lawrence. Oh my God, Mom went to a concert. <laughs> hey, everybody, my mom went to a concert. She had three drinks. I know. <laughs> and you know she doesn't drink when she sits down and she's like, "What was that drink I got the last time?" <laughs> so I mistakenly. Thought she had had a whiskey sour, right. so I ordered her a whiskey sour, and she goes, "Ooh, <laughs> a little too strong." But she's she's a trooper. She she powered through. So then I think I said, "I think maybe you got a um, an amaretto sour because that's what Tina, my sister, likes to drink." She's like, "Okay." So we order her an amaretto sour, and she's like, "Ooh, that's too sweet." <laughs> and knowing my mom. <laughs> My mom, in the words, too sweet in the sentence don't happen very often. <laughs> no, it's not. No, it doesn't happen at all. So I was like, that must really be sweet if my mom is saying that's sweet. So we went back to the whiskey sour again. And she was okay. And she was okay. She had, well, she, anybody she, after three whiskeys, you're going to be okay. But I think those ladies, the bartenders, and the, I, I think they kind of liked us, you know, with mom and Brenda there. They like you because they want you to tip. Yeah. Exactly. That that's the cynic in me. <laughs> but anyway, I think they fixed your drink up pretty good. I think so too. They were definitely uh a little yeah. heavy on the pour. So, but she had a good time. She uh it, it's fun to see her finally relax and just a little yeah. bit and enjoying herself. And Tracy Lawrence, he happened to put on a good show, yeah, didn't yeah. he? I like what was the name of the group? I told you Braxton Keith. I like that group. Hopefully we'll hear something from him somewhere down the road. They yeah, were good. I told you a few weeks. No, maybe it was a month before that. Brenda and I had gone back to Florida to see uh, the Juan Lobo Tequila Fest uh -huh. featuring John Wolf, which I had to put two and two together. John Wolf, Juan Lobo. They're the same. It's the same. <laughs> but the tequila is called Juan Lobo. So he had, uh, it was a, it was he... Ned Ledoux, I cannot remember the third guy, but the fourth guy was Braxton Keith, and he opened it up. And I was just totally blown away by how good he was and how much polish he has, and he is such a young man. Yes. You know, a little bit of uh, George Strait. George Strait. But, you know, he kept it lively. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was really active into the songs. Has a good voice. A very good yeah. band. And uh, – it, it, it was just a good group. I really enjoyed. I enjoyed them about as much as I did Tracy Lawrence. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and I, I think he's going to be a star. I really do. I think he's got, I think he's got the Hopefully chops. He'll get that one little break. Yep. Cause once he does, if he can get just a little national attention, he'll go someplace. I think so too. Yeah. He was good. Yeah. But so, seeing Ned Ledoux, uh, the son of Chris Ledoux. Oh my gosh. That is, it, he's got something going on too. And yeah, it's good to see the father and son. Act, you know, well, the father's been dead for a while. Dad. I know, but it's, that you're th you're thinking of that video I sent you where it, they're both singing the right. same song and they cut back and right. forth between Kinda the like two. Hank and Hank Jr. Yes, and yes, some yes. Of those guys, and, but it's nice to see that you know a father was famous and you see the son kind of following and getting a little spotlight. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of neat. Yeah, so, it is. So good stuff going yeah. on out there. So, but so we want to do hear from you if you want think we should maybe change the format a little bit and talk more about the relationship, the dynamic between the father and the son, uh, growing up, growing old, doing things together. Who's growing old? Uh, have you looked in the mirror lately? Yeah, I did. I saw a 20 year old. <laughs> no, that was in your <laughs> mind. Cause oh. I look in the mirror and I like, who the hell is this old guy? You know I, mean? I look at those pictures and say, Oh man, who is that? Speaking of which I saw a picture of you taken probably 22, 23 years ago. And I'm looking at you and I'm like, okay, your hair was definitely darker. You were definitely a little thinner, <laughs> but I'm like, you know what? You were in that picture about the same age that I am right now. Yeah. And I was like, man, where does, where does all this go? How does it happen? Yeah. You know, it's just like, I was showing you these pictures of, of your mom and your grandfather, you know, Look at that picture of your mom. So, oh, oh, there's the camera. Yeah. And her dad. And, and yeah, her brothers just, and sisters. Yeah. Yep. And then that's her grandmother and grandfather and and their grandkids. But time goes by fast. That's Ooh, why are I you always kidding? tell all my friends, enjoy the memories while you can. I had no idea that in, when I was in the army, I couldn't get to 20. It could not come fast enough. Boy, let me tell you what, it's been 10 years since I retired and it went by like that. Yeah. Somebody, I went somewhere this past weekend and somebody was, and we were talking about age and somebody was joking about it. I said, yeah, you better enjoy it now because tomorrow you'll be here. Yeah, I mean, it's, time goes by quicker as you get older. And you've been, You've been retired from the air. You've been retired from the air force twice as long as you spent in the air force mm -hmm. now, hasn't it? You yeah, retired I'm in 1983, January 1st, 83. So, and so January so that's 18, that's 40 years. This is my army math. Uh, so, uh, 93, 2003, 13, so in one January, 40 years. it'll be 40 years since you retired mm -hmm. and you had done 20. So twice as long as your time in the service, sure. you have been out of the service. Yep. Can you believe that? Yep. That's like your mom and I. We've been married almost three Did, times her age as she was since she got, when we, we got married. She was 20. And we got we just had 57 a few days ago. Yep. Yeah. And then look at you. I know. I'm old. And I was bragging about you this morning. This lady at, at Broadway Bank, she was. Dad, how many times have I told you? Nobody cares about your kids. She, she, she was pretty impressed that you were DAV. She was just being nice because you were giving her. GS-14. You were starting. Yeah. Yeah. We were in the process of closing out banks in, the, in our DAV, Disabled American Veteran Chapter. So we've gone from one bank to another bank. So that's what he's talking about. Yeah. So we're bringing our business somewhere else. Broadway Bank, I'm going to tell you that. Lady, the whole crew was nice, but she was very receptive. Was glad to have us. She was very respective of the DAV. Asked me if we have a contact, so I give her my name and number. You know, okay. any veterans come in, they need some support. That's what we do. In uh, November is Veteran Veterans Day is coming up. We're going to be at Golden Corral, uh, National Night Out for veterans and you know, donations and. It's a big charity drive between uh, a charity drive and there's a, can you tell everybody about Golden Corral and the DAV, not just our chapter, but nationally? Nationally. Golden Corral supports DAV nationally with their fundraiser. Okay. Every year. 
half of everything that we collect goes to national. The other half goes, goes to, to our chapter. chapter to help veterans. Do you know what organization is the best as far as returning the money back to the vets? Would it be the DAV? DAV. 95.1 cents out of every dollar goes back to veterans. That's so, the highest rate. So, so you hear that, people? Your DAV. Support your disabled American veteran if you're here in America. For the people that are not in America, we've had people from Brazil, Canada, uh, England, Italy. Holy crap. If you're ever touring in America and you see a disabled American veteran um, fundraiser, you know, throw 25, 30, 40, 50 cents a dollar in Everything there. Everything helps. And like I said, 95.1 cents out of every dollar goes back to, to help veterans. Uh, the other less than 5% goes for administrative costs. Better Tunnel for Towers, a great organization that helps all uh, first responders, veterans, police, right. fire. They actually contribute more dollars, but not the, the percentage, percentage of the dollar of the that dollar goes back to the charity. Because they have more administrative overhead. Overhead, yeah. Let's see if I can get this thing to boot up. So we're at 280 all time downloads. Um, let me see. We were at 250 last time, right? 250, 260. I mean, in, in in all fairness, we have not in like two months done an That's, episode. Exactly. And, but we have tried. We This technology, we were sitting right here maybe three weeks, two ago, weeks ago, and, and, and the link just crapped out after like five minutes. minutes and it just yep, no, not even 10, more like yeah. five or eight. All right, so since we have started, 221 downloads from America, 17 from the United wow, Kingdom. That's pretty neat. Four from Canada. From the UK, so God Save the King. Four from Canada, two from Belgium, two from Brazil, two from Ireland, two from Italy, two from the Netherlands, one from Australia, the Aussies, and then that other country we don't talk about. Yep. No, we don't talk about that. No. So well, we, we need to get another Belgium in there. That, that'll make your mom uh, happy. Since but you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed. We've had North America, South America, a good smattering of Europe. So that's three continents, Dad. Yeah. North America, South, South America, America, and Australia. Oh. Wait, no, four. Four. See? Europe, North America, South America, and Australia. Four. Yep. So four we need that's pretty two good. more continents. Yep. Is there five continents? Five. So, no. Antarctica. There's seven. Antarctica. That's five. Africa, Africa. six. Asia. Asia. So there are seven, seven. continents. Ha <laughs> ha. So history class coming back. So yeah, yeah, we we we're doing pretty good, people. We're doing pretty good. Yeah. Give us some feedback. Let us know more. Especially, I, this first time I hear about us thinking about changing to. Well, because I've been thinking about it. That's pretty good because we got a lot to talk about. That's a lot yeah. of things we've done these last few years. A lot of concerts and uh, doing some parenting things. challenges. Yeah, now you're fixing to go through it. You got your daughter at college. Then Still just, going through it, yeah. yeah. Some granddaughters are getting up pretty close. And I can always tell when my wife is getting ready to tell me something about Mackenzie and something that they've been talking about at school or home or life or yeah. apartment living or whatever. If it's not very favorable, she'd be like, do you know what your daughter <laughs> said? <laughs> or can you, believe, can you believe what your daughter did? And I'm like, yeah, no, it, tell it, me. <laughs> it's like so obviously she did something which would be very reminiscent of some of the things that I may have done in my past most life. Most likely. Most likely. So let's just say she's enjoying the college experience. That's what it's supposed to be. But she's also making good grades. Yes, she is. She's what, three what? She's probably close to a three point five. Yeah. Yeah, and we're, we're very blessed that um our DAV chapter just uh, presented her with a two five hundred dollars scholarships, one for each semester. One for yeah. each semester. Then we had one to our adjutant Raphael. The same. We gave uh, the three two, three one thousand dollars scholarships. And then one of our other member, our, one of our past commanders, uh, his granddaughter. 
it was really nice that uh, Raphael's granddaughter came to the to the chapter and, and personally thank for the help and uh, and a little bit about her and what her career plans are. It's nice to see young adults, and that's what DAV does. Not only are we helping veterans, we're also trying to help veterans and their families and their family. So it's a great organization. So if you need some help, reach out to a DAV uh, member. They will do what they can. Absolutely. They'll, they'll go out of the way to help you. So tell me about your last, you saw Judas Priest? No, that was a couple months ago, Dad. Okay. I know you're old. Then you had. Uh, oh, my God, Dad. So. Who was that one where you were doing all that hand stuff? I saw that. Yeah. The metal horns? Uh, that that was from Judas Priest. Now, a buddy of mine that I met in line at a concert, it was a meet and greet couple of years ago that's how i met my friend baldo and uh you know that's what people in heavy metal do so that's not hook of horns no it's not hook of okay. horns um so let me look at my calendar so i've been to quite a few concerts yeah so at the beginning of september we saw robert earl keen then the 13th of september in austin i saw iron maiden with trivium and then that was on a Tuesday. Then on Friday, that's when I saw the the, the John Wolf or Juan Lobo Honky Tonk Tequila Festival. Then the next day on Saturday, that's when I saw Ramstein. Yeah. All that fire. I'll tell you, I did some research on that. that you was, saw some videos? The, the videos you sent me. It's pretty amazing. And then how much time? It takes three days to build the stage. That is amazing. And then they came to San Antonio to do it. That was yeah. Only 10 cities in North America got that tour. But that was just, I'm not really into that kind of music, but just seeing what they did and how much they put into it. And then, and the guy who was in charge of that, he was pretty enthusiastic about it. They have, what, 250 people, he said, that travel mm -hmm. to help set up, and then they, another two to 300 people they locally hire. that they hire. Mm -hmm. So he said all together, including the security, the concessions, it, he said it takes about 1,000 people to yep. put on a show. Yeah, and... Two things are important about that. One is giving the local venue or people employment super money. Is that for you know, just as, at least a, a job? And I would imagine they probably pay fairly well. I would hope so. Yeah. So, but then the county city and all the revenue brings into the city. So, do you remember me telling you when I was in a very long line to get T-shirts? Yeah. I was talking to two guys in front of me that had come down from Colorado Springs, Colorado. One guy flew in from Biloxi, Mississippi to see this show. So people were flying in from all over the United States. And there was a family that I met on the floor that were here from Germany oh, wow. to I'll see meet. the band. That's pretty neat. So then after that, so that was a Tuesday, Friday, Saturday. Then Sunday, I went on a trip to D.C. for a conference came back and then a week later um, I saw Jody Messina mm -hmm. and then then we went to brunch yeah yeah was it gather or Ga it? gather brewing gather. really good venue very nice beer very good uh, breakfast the hospitality was just awesome food was great yep was, what so did you get? I had the French the, toast uh, sticks? The waffle uh, Waffle dips. sticks. Yeah, the dips. Over at Universal City. Go get, check it out. Right across from uh, Rand Randolph, Randolph Air Force Randolph Base. Randolph Air Force Base. Yeah, the Just on the other. T H E R. Yep, right across the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. So that was on Sunday. Then on Tuesday, I went and saw another German heavy metal band called Accept. They've been around since the late 70s. I had a meet and greet. I got to see them and get take my picture with them. Another... Yeah, I saw that. That's how I keep up with him. At least I go on Facebook. I can see what kind of stupid stuff he's doing. That was on Tuesday. Like jumping off stages and stuff. Then on Thursday, I saw the Dead Boys. So was he dead? Uh, most of the members are dead. <laughs> <laughs> only only the uh, the guitarist, Cheetah Chrome, is still alive. <laughs> that wasn't meant to be funny, but it is kind of funny. It is kind of funny. <laughs> I think that's called irony and a pun, and I'm sure all sorts of other... We so a, we had another concert coming up. I forgot. Hang that. on, I'm not done. You were asking me about my concerts. Yeah. I'm not done. So, so when I was at the Dead Boys show before it had started, I was at their merchandise table. And I was going to get a T-shirt, 
and there was nobody there. And then the one of the opening acts, Susie Moon, she had her merchandise out, and there was nobody standing there. And all of a sudden, this this young woman, you know, about yay high, she comes up, and I'm looking, and I'm like, you wouldn't happen to be Susie Moon, would you? And she goes, yes, I am. And I'm like, I'd like to get one of your T-shirts. <laughs> and then I was like, would you mind if I get a photo? And she's like, yeah, sure, come on around. Dad, let me tell you, that woman put on a heck of a show. Man, she can rock out. It was a good old-fashioned punk rock concert because uh-huh. that's what the dead boys are they're punk rock so history go look up the the bar the club cbgb there's a movie about it so out of that club punk rock really got its start from cbgb in the, the 70s in the bowery so uh the talking heads came out of there the band blondie came out of there the ramones came out of there the police have played so where's there. This, where's this at? What city? New York City in oh, the okay. in, in the Bronx. Bronx or the Bow? I think it's in the Bowery, but I don't know what if that's in the Bronx okay. or Brooklyn. Anyway, so it was a very seedy place. There's a movie called CBGB. You should watch it, and it's about all of the punk bands that were in there. Well, one of those bands that had come up through there was the Dead Boys. So that was Thursday. Then the next night, Friday, that was when we went to see Tracy Lawrence. Right. And then this past Friday, Brent and I went to Green Hall to see the Wallflowers. How was that? Jacob Dylan. Oh my gosh, yeah. such a great show. He's he sounds exactly like the records. So if you go all the way back to what 1991, 92, when that first album came out, still the same. He's still around. Go check out, J- check him out. So that's, and then tomorrow night I got a concert. Where are you going tomorrow night? Tomorrow night, I am going to see Lamb of God, Kill Switch Engage, Animals as Leaders, and Fit for an Autopsy. Okay. Okay. Don't ask me anything else. I'm not. Because it's no like idea. everybody else at work. If, if I'm friends with them on Facebook or whatever, or if they've been working with me for a while, they'll be like, hey, where, who are you going to go see this week? And I'm like, why? Does it matter if I tell you? Because you're not going to know who they are. And they're like, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. And I tell them, and they're yeah, like, I like to know. And I'm like, I don't know who they are. Yeah, some of them will go, yes. November 12th, Charlie Crockett. Yep. I did not know who he was. I saw a picture of him, and it said the man from something. And I look, and I'm like, man, that looks like an old country artist. And I, and I listen to his music, and he sounds like an old country artist. And I'm like, that sounds like something my but dad would like. That old. But he's not old, yeah. but he has that old look, that yeah. old feel. He's like an old soul for that old country music. You know, one of the things about, about Green Hall and going to Floors, they typically will sell out. I mean, they do. Tracy Lawrence, I'm going to tell you. It, it, it was packed. It was packed. And you know, and people are nice. You, you don't see a lot of, I don't know what you want. It ain't like going to Cowboys up on the north side of town. Yeah, that, that's kind of crazy. So, you better hang on to your woman if you go there. <laughs> but uh, it was nice. It was. So it, it's a lot of history. Lot Every of time history. I go to Floors in Green, I like looking at the walls because I see something new I didn't see before or, or whatever. It takes you back down that memory lane yeah. when you're getting to be. And man, in November, I've got in the first fifteen days of November. I have not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, but seven concerts in 15 days. So now I know where you spend your money. I'm keeping the economy afloat (laughs) single-handedly, people. (laughs) And not just the economy, I'm helping these artists. And speaking of artists, when you go to the show, go to their merchandise table, buy the t-shirts, buy the hats, the pens, the CDs. Whatever they've got for sale, please purchase it because 100% of all of that money goes to the artist. Yes. And that helps. Because they're not making any money off the streaming. They're making literally pennies yep. on the streaming. But and they, they keep the members going, don't they? They do. So yeah. go to the show and buy a T-shirt, people. You're, you're helping out the bands and you're and keeping you them alive. Here, that helps uh, the venue. And, and drink a lot of beer. And maybe some amaretto sours and some whiskey sours. Just take somebody to drive. Or take an Uber or a Lyft. There you go. You know what? We should probably do that one of the shows. Take an Uber. Yeah, then I wouldn't have to just drink two beers and quit. 
as you told me a long time ago. Drink your beer up front. That gives you a couple of hours. For it to get out of your then system. we can drive home safely. Yep. And that's so, the deal your mom and I. That's why she had her. I almost talked her into a fourth one. Oh, man. I would have had to carry her back to the car. <laughs> and then she wanted to carry what was left of that one out. I, I said, Mom, they won't let you carry liquor outside. Why? <laughs> I paid for it. <laughs> this ain't the river walk. <laughs> you know, either drink it or you got to pour it out. Yep. Yeah. So I think she drank it. <laughs> She probably did. Yeah. But she had if, a good time. She got a straw, she'll drink it. When your mom starts softening up and start really talking, she likes to talk anyway, but when she really starts to talk and, and she gets a little giggly, you know she's having a good time. Speaking of which, I wish I had known then what I know now because <laughs> I'd have been a little bartender growing up. <laughs> yeah. Come home from school, sitting over there. Here, Mom, <laughs> you want to try this? <laughs> Here, Mom, let me pour you a drink. Yeah, pour you another one. That one's only halfway gone. You better, better put, top it off. <laughs> then after I got her liquored up, then I could be like, hey, Mom, I got in trouble at school today. <laughs> <laughs> but she'd always defend you. She'd give you hell, but she'd always I know. She'd be you. like, wait till your dad gets home. <laughs> that usually straightened me out. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it was, right? Yeah, that's the way it was. See, these are the kind of things we should probably be that are probably probably a little funnier and more fun and probably more meaningful for people to listen to. Cause I, I don't really listen to a lot of podcasts, so I'm not, I'm just guessing what people want, but I, I know Brenda has been getting into them more and I know my daughter McKenzie is, and they follow or listen to a lot of the, the true crime podcasts. So they're, those are what they would call serial podcasts. So they're like, it's like a book. They'll read you like a chapter about something that, it's either in a book or it's not in a book or in a movie that they think is important and they share the story. So maybe we can share some of our stories and then intermix, like I said, some of our antics when we go out and about. Sounds like a winner. There's something else to talk about. Right? And, and if we still don't get any viewership up, then maybe we'll just hang it up. Yeah. And your two, your two, uh, two of your granddaughters, what I'm saying, Girl Scouts? I did not know that. She's doing really good. Saw some pictures. Then Isabel with her soccer. Mm. And then little Hannah playing yep, soccer. Yeah, Hannah. She's playing soccer. That was, that was pretty neat watching her. So soccer. is Lydia in the Girl Scouts? Hmm? Is it Lydia? Lydia's in Girl Scouts. I did know that, people. She, I'm just being funny. And it showed a picture of her at sewn a pillow. Yep. As part of her Girl Scout project. That's pretty neat. Keep her involved and. That says a lot about you as a father. Probably says more about Kaylee and Peter as parents. It does. But who sets the tone for them? Mom and dad have to set the tone for their children. Who set the tone for their children? Which would probably be her mom because that's who pretty much raised her and Erica. But there's also other influences. Just being, just being fair and honest people. But, but there's also other influences too. True. But anyway, really proud of them and see what they're doing and stuff like that. So, can you look at the time? Yeah, 28 minutes. 28 minutes, and what did Aunt Carolyn quick, tell us? Pretty quick. 30 minutes. Keep it at 30 pretty minutes petty. or less. Yeah, that's right. But you know what? Out of all of the states that have listened to our podcast, you know what state hasn't? Georgia. Georgia. <laughs> what state does Aunt Carolyn live in? <laughs> Georgia. So, how would she know about any of this if she's not downloading the podcast from Georgia? That's what I said. It's, it's one of life's great mysteries. Isn't when it? she called and she said, tell him to send me that stuff so she can download it. So we'll have at least one from Georgia. Aunt Carolyn, if you're listening, if you have Apple phones, you go to Apple Podcasts. If you have an Android phone, you can go to Google Podcasts and just type in the two old farts and look for our, our picture, which is a microphone with the headphones on it. Red background, the two old farts out and about. There you go. Or you can go to Spotify. You can go to iHeartRadio. You can go to Pandora. Any place where fine podcasts are, you can even go to Podbean and look there for us. So, but yeah, thank you all for downloading. Um, spread the word. We do want to hear back from you. You can reach us on the socials. We're on Facebook. The Two Old Farts, uh, Twitter, The Two Old Farts, 
or at the tool farts instagram at the tool farts but you got to put a space or not a space a, an underline in between each of the words like like so you use the at symbol at the underscore that's the word underscore the underscore the number two underscore old underscore farts for twitter and instagram so that's why I need to look at. I didn't even have an Instagram account until you created it for me the other day. And have you even looked at Instagram? Have you posted anything? Nope. See, that's another thing. People reach out to us, help th these old people get hip to technology. Hey, just draw me a picture, give me some directions. I'm okay. After I read it, and you read it to me. All right. Well, all right. Thank you all. I got to get back to work. One. All right. Me too. You don't work anymore. Yeah, I do. All right. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye. Love you. Love you all.